How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here checking out 10 different video games. This is one game across 10 different consoles. So when you're out at video game stores or video game conventions, overwhelmed with how many selections there are to choose from. If you're looking for something Atari, looking for something NES, looking for something PlayStation 1, this video series is perfect for something like that. And starting this video off with one of my absolute favorite games on the PlayStation 1. From the moment you pop it in and it plays that hype reel, you know you're gonna be in for a treat. Now this game is called Bust a Groove here in the United States. Bust a Groove in the US. If it looks a little different or something like that, I'm actually playing Bust a Move. That's the Japanese version. They couldn't call it that in the US because the US Bust a Move is Puzzle Bobble in Japan. Never mind about all that. If you're looking for it in the US, look out for Bust a Groove. Okay, there is one and two. I'm just gonna showcase the first one in this video. This is a rhythm game. This game came out during the height of the rhythm game invasion, which I was all for. You choose your player and you have to press your button on the beat whether it be the circle button or sometimes the X button. It'll be one of those two, the circle button or the X button, but before that you'll see a sequence, a combination there. You do not have to push those arrows in rhythm, but you do have to hit the circle or the X button on the beat, if that makes sense. So if it says left, you can push left whenever you want, and just as long as you hit that circle button on the beat. Each song is gonna be in a four quarter measure, so it shouldn't have anything to worry about. The more you do them good, the more you do them in sequence, the better your combos are getting, and the better points you're going to get, the better you're going to do overall in this game. Each song will also have a couple of times where you take a solo, in this game, so like it says just you, then just them, then just you, then just them, so that's kind of fun. Breaks it down a little bit. The different characters have different dance styles, but everyone plays pretty much the same. You just have to hit those buttons in the right sequence. Now there are also distraction moves as well as evading the distraction moves as well. You have a full measure, so when you activate it, you have, well, four beats to the measure before you either have to evade it or you know, or you'll, or you'll take the damage, you know, you'll you'll get hit. You can do that twice per level. The songs are addicting, the songs are fantastic. It was just a fun idea for a game, and I absolutely love this game. It's called Bust a Groove here in the US. If you're playing the import version like I am, Bust a Move, whatever works. Next up for Game Boy Color is WWF Betrayal. This is a WWF game, now known as WWE. Um, it features The Rock, Steve Austin, Triple H, and The Undertaker. However, this game is not a wrestling game. I know that might be confusing because it's called WWF, and it has all these wrestlers from the time. But no, this is a side-scrolling beat-em-up, believe it or not. Yeah, it features other characters, you know, like here's Vince McMahon, you know, waving arms and stuff like that. Kind of reminds me of the used boat salesman from, uh, from Monkey Island there. But no, other than that, it's just a single-player, side-scrolling, uh, beat them up. It's, it's all it really is. And depending on who you play as, you can also, like, after a little bit, you can kind of do, you know, like your, your finishing move or something. You know, I'm playing a Steve Austin here, so you got the Stone Cold Stunner every once in a while. Move set, very limited. Uh, this game, very monotonous. However, I was a huge wrestling fan, and it was kind of nice to see them using the wrestling IP to do a non wrestling game. And I would love to see a modern day side scrolling beat em up. I would absolutely love it. I wish they would. I really wish they would. I think it would do really well. I know there was talk of one a while back, but I don't think it went anywhere. WWF Betrayal, this one is for the Game Boy Color. Look out for it. Moving on to the TurboGrafx 16, known for its wonderful side scrolling shooters. And this one, one of the best, it's called Dead Moon. Dead Moon. I know there are so many shooters out there, there are so many games on the TurboGrafx 16. But when you hear about shooters for the TurboGrafx 16, you usually go straight to R Type. Uh, Blazing Laser is a great one as well, but Dead Moon, man, it's one of my favorites. I absolutely love Dead Moon. I couldn't exactly tell you why, because it plays like, well, let's be honest, just about every other side-scrolling shooter <laughs> out there. Uh, but when you when they drop the items, you can pick those up, and those kind of become your new weapons. So if you're looking for a laser, looking for the wave weapons, uh, looking for you know whatever kind of bullet things too. You can also pick up missiles. You can pick up uh, little side buddies to uh, you know help you help you shoot and protect and whatever it is too. I think I like this game because I love side-scrolling shooters. I'm not the biggest fan of bullet hell. I do like bullet hells, but I'm not the biggest fan of them. I would rather have a I hate to say casual side-scrolling shooter experience. Just give me the wave of enemies and another wave of enemies and pick up some power-ups, defeat the boss, enjoy the background scenery. I mean, because Bullet Hells, I'm just like, it's like a precision platform. It's like, I just, just I want to be able to enjoy the game too. And Dead Moon, it's a game I absolutely enjoy. TurboGrafx-16, check it out. Hey, how about one for the Atari 2600? Taz, based on the Tasmanian Devil, 1983. This game came out during the crash of video games right here in the United States, but I loved this game. Um, I was very sentimental for this game. I have a fond memory of at home and my dad, for no reason, just he, he was probably at the store and it was probably in the bargain bin or something like that, and he brought home a new Atari game. A new Atari game in 1983? 
crazy. And I remember telling my sister, I was like, oh, hey, look what dad just brought home, but you know, but don't tell anyone. And of course, if you tell a child, don't tell anyone, well, they immediately turned around and told my uh, two older brothers too. So then, but still, you know, <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to get some solo game time without being interrupted. Uh, the game itself, as you've already kind of told, it, you're, just, you're just in this area for the uh, 2600. You play as Taz in whirlwind mode. Eat the food, don't eat the dynamite. And the more you go, the more the food changes. Now, after a while, the cheeseburgers become root beer. Yay! But you still have to avoid the dynamite, of course. You know, three three strikes, you're out. Your, your typical style here. It's a high score getter. I don't think there's an end to this game. I've, I've certainly never beaten it. I always just like to see how far I can get and then see what the food the food option turns into. I don't know. I, I still come back, like whenever I'm in an Atari 2600 mood, I come back to this game. Probably because, you know, I, again, I have, a, I have a direct nostalgia memory playing this when I was younger, when it first came out in 1983. Can you believe it? Taito always makes great games and Growl, man, it's, it's a wonderful one. Better than the arcade, this is for the Sega Genesis, by the way. This one is for the Sega Genesis. Great game. The controls are a little stiff. The controls are a little, eh, and the side-scrolling beat-em-up action is a little, eh, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not it's not Streets of Rage, but not every game can be Streets of Rage. You have to you know mix it up a little bit too. Game with a good moral, game with a good value. You know, you're you're defeating the poachers in this game, who are uh, you know terrorizing and you know capturing the animals for their own profit or whatever. So you have to uh, defeat them, and there are tons of those. If you like those side-scrolling beat em ups, you're like, oh cool, a lead pipe, or oh cool, a, a a box to throw or something like that. There's tons of those in this game, but there's like swords and guns, and <laughs> as you as you saw, like the, you know, the rocket launchers and stuff right at the beginning of the game, the whips and all that too. Very very cool game. I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of this game for sure. Weirdest final boss ever. One of the weirdest final. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to show you in this video. I'm not going to tell you. You could look it up if you'd like. But the final boss in this game is a twist ending that you probably wouldn't see coming. But Growl for the Genesis or Mega Drive. Might want to check it out, it's pretty cool. And with that, let's check out Scott from Game Closet. I've got a first person shooter for you for the Xbox 360 and the PS3 called Singularity by Ravensoft and Activision of all people. Now, if you've played this before and you're saying, yes, I love this game. And I love John Riggs's videos. So hit that like mitten and the subscribe button if you haven't. Singularity got decent reviews, but sold fairly poorly. And that's why many people have never heard of this incredible game. You play as Captain Ranko, a US Marine sent to a former Soviet island that had been experimenting with the TMD, time manipulation device that's powered by a mysterious substance known as E-99. Because of an E-99 bomb explosion in 1955, all heck breaks loose. Now, Captain Renko uses the TMD device and his weaponry to fight off mutated creatures and the forces of evil that are attempting to... Spoilers! Hey, it's an interesting story with a touch of horror and gore, and I wouldn't want to give away the best parts. We'll see you very soon. Back to you, John. Thank you, kind sir. Amazing Penguin popped up on the list here. Amazing Penguin popped up. That was a game I recommended someone from Cameo, which by the way, it, it's a service that I do on Cameo. A lot of times Cameo is more of the like, hey, give you a shout out, give you a birthday, whatever. I like to use Cameo for hit me up with the kind of games you're looking for and I will give you a personalized recommendation. And this was one of my personalized recommendations just recently. So I figured I'd add it to the video too. Amazing Penguin for the Game Boy Classic. A uh, fun puzzle game on this one. You play as a penguin, as you can imagine. And a little bit like Kix, kind of, where once the, uh, once the border of an area is cleared, it will fill in. And you have these little pegs or whatever these are. You can crush those just by walking over them while you hold down the button. And you have these other things too that you can crush or you can kick them out of the way. You can kick them out of the way, which will also kick them into enemies and defeat them by squishing them or smushing them or whatever. Fill in the entire level, move on to the next stage. Nice and easy, but the game is not easy because again, it's a it's a puzzle type game. So the more you play it, the harder it gets, the more the enemies get a little bit more unpredictable, if you will. But it was just a simple style pick up and play. Perfect for the Game Boy, but still fun even on a Super Game Boy or Raspberry Pi or Mr. or Emily. I'm not going to judge you how you play your games. You can hack a NES Classic for all I care, and we probably should. A little bit ago, we talked about WWF Betrayal. Well, it was not a wrestling game, but this one is a wrestling game. Hammerlock Wrestling. We're on Super Nintendo now. Hammerlock Wrestling in Japan was Genichiro Tenryu, which as a wrestling name that may just fly over your head, doesn't really matter. Um, he ran a wrestling promotion called Wrestle and Romance, W-A-R, uh, War. 
Um, this is that game, but in the United States. So they changed a couple of the characters. In fact, here you go right here. This is Genetrio Tenryo. The other guys are, you know, kind of the, the bootleg characters of maybe some other Japanese wrestlers. I thought it was interesting because you have the wrestling in the middle of the screen, and then it goes to like a cinematic mode on both sides, depending on what the moves are. So I, you keep on wanting to see the other windows to watch the animations happen. <laughs> but but really you're supposed to watch the middle part to actually pull off your moves and maneuvers and I just thought it was a cool idea for a wrestling game. There are better wrestling games on the Super Nintendo but the uniqueness of this game made me want to showcase it even just for a moment. It's a game that you know you already have the WWF games for the time for Super Nintendo. Maybe you even have WCW which is another terrible wrestling game but and there's some great wrestling games on the Super Nintendo. Um, this one's Okay, this one's, this one's, this one might be worth checking out, especially for the cinematics. I just think it's pretty cool. Moving on to Game Boy Advance now, and now we have Denki Blocks. Denki Blocks is one of the best puzzle games you may have never heard of. Denki Blocks. Well, it's a fun, I mean, look at the graphics, first of all. This is like, it gives you that warm, welcome, kiddish, cartoonish Game Boy Advance puzzle game realness. And then when you play the game, you have to make the blocks all stick together from the same color by any means necessary. Well, easy enough by any means necessary, really, right? So you just have these uh, blocks that are in place, and by pushing like left, right, down, up, or whatever, you move all of them all at the same time. But by sticking them together, that's when you succeed. Congratulations. And as the levels move on, there's more obstacles in the way, and then sometimes like you might get too many of them stuck, so you have to like find a way around them and maneuver them and everything. Sometimes you have to uh, make blocks of multiple colors, so you have to clear all of them out before you can move on to the next stage. And sometimes you'll even see there's like a bonus thing on the side there. It's like, oh, if you, you can do this and get the bonus points, you don't have to do it though, but it gives you an extra challenge. So either pass the stages and maybe you can always go back through and then try it again by getting the uh, the bonus blockade done. Or just go through the game, however you want to play this game. I just thought it was a unique and pretty fun idea for a game, but you know, again, with the obstacles in the way and the more you play it, play it your own way. Den Key Blocks for the Game Boy Advance, a simple style puzzle game, I think is really fun. Well, you know, they say NES is NE best, that somebody is this guy, and that Andy Social Network guy on Twitch, but this is the game North and South. Have you played North and South yet? I think it's a super fun game. Better as a two-player. It's okay as a one-player. It's okay versus the computer. It's okay. It's fine. Much better, much, much better as a two-player game. But definitely check this game out, North and South. You can play as the North, yet you can play as the South and rewrite history if you'd like. But the idea is, and it looks like one of those weird strategy games, it kind of is, but this one doesn't play as hardcore as those other Koei-style games that I'm that are just confusing to me in the first place. But you do just you you take out the opposition, and there's a few ways to do this, and I'll show you one of the one of the prime ways that you'll see right here is you have your three, you have your your guards. I, I don't know what the names of these people are. You have your people, your horses, and your cannon. I don't know if that's like your military infantry horse I don't know but you can swap them back you can swap you can switch them around and everything you know what the horses will just keep going and slash their sword the other ones have guns and of course your cannon can power up your shot and hopefully destroy you can also use that cannon to you know destroy bridges and stuff like that too makes it nice and easy for you but once you clear them out or they clear you out um, then you can uh, kind of capture the flag if you will and um, and just keep playing from there. There's so much more going on in this game too. There's actually parts where like you invade the forts and all that to, uh, to like, really capture the flag. North and South, it's a super, super fun game. Again, way better as a two-player game, but as a one-player game, I think it plays pretty well. And I only do 10 consoles per video, so other videos also might have Dreamcast or GameCube uh, or Nintendo 64, but those are 10 for this video. We'll do another one coming up soon. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Check out those other videos in the meantime, too, and we'll get some more videos out as soon as we can for you.